This is chapter 11, Polyphase Circuits, sections 1 to 2. The learning goals for this first two sections are to consider three phase circuits, including their advantages, and also three phase connections, the basic configuration for three phase circuit. It's a rather short section, but very important because it is the basis of industrial electrical distribution. Section 1, three-phase circuits. Let's consider a three-phase circuit in which we have three voltage sources, which are independent. We notice that there is V sub AN at 120 volts, zero degrees RMS. VBN at 120 volts, minus 120 degrees volts RMS. And VCN, 120 volts, minus 240 degrees volts RMS. This would be called a three-phase circuit because there are in fact three independent phases, A, B, and C, with a common return indicated by N, which stands for neutral. We can write each of the voltages then in terms of phasor relationships. For example, V sub M is 120 to square root of two, essentially. And we can have the instantaneous phase voltages in terms of V sub N. So we've removed the RMS content by multiplying by the square root of two. So 120 times the square root of two would give us the peak voltage, whereas 120 is the RMS voltage. The instantaneous phase voltages that are given here in the time domain, and it's basically V sub M, this magnitude 120 to square root of two times cosine omega T, or times cosine omega t minus 120 degrees, or cosine omega t minus 240 degrees. In North America, omega, of course, is 2 pi f, and f is 60 hertz nominally. However, in other countries, f may be other frequencies. For example, in the UK, f is 50, degree, uh, 50 hertz. Each of these voltage sources provide currents, and we'll call them I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C. And we have so-called balanced phase currents, hopefully. We would have IA be IM cosine omega T minus theta. IB would be IM cosine omega T minus theta minus 120 degrees. And IC would be IM cosine omega T minus theta minus 240 degrees. The angles 0, 120, and 240 are the original phases, and the angle theta is an additional phase due to possible reactive loads on each of the phases. The instantaneous power co calculation, as we've seen before, is the product of voltage and current. P of T is equal to each of the voltages, V sub A N times I A plus V sub B N times I B plus V sub C N times I C. For a theorem, for balanced three-phase circuit, the instantaneous power, it would be constant, and we'll discuss balanced in the context of loads, but P of T then would be three VM IM divided by two cosine theta, and the units of that, of course, are watts. Let's do a proof of this theorem. We did say for the balanced three-phase circuit, the instantaneous power is a constant, 3 Vm Im over 2 cosine theta watts. And we can do that by looking at some trigonometric identities. For example, a trig identity for cosine phi, an arbitrary angle, plus cosine phi minus 120, plus cosine phi plus 120 equals zero. That's a trigonometric identity. And we can, prove that by substitution of each of the terms in terms of what they're equal to. So cosine theta is cosine theta. I'm sorry, cosine phi is equal to cosine phi. And cosine phi minus 120 is by a trig identity cosine phi cosine 120 degrees plus sine theta sine 120 degrees and cosine phi plus 120 would be cosine phi cosine 120 minus sine phi sine 120. And these of course are 
trigonometric identities, which would be useful to have in your notes. Now, cosine 120 degrees is minus 0 0.5. And therefore, we can reduce this equation to this equation, where cosine phi plus cosine phi minus 120 plus cosine phi plus 120, in fact, would equal 0. For instantaneous power then, we know it's the product of voltage and current, so we can make a substitution now for what that represents. While the amplitudes V sub M I M can be factored out, and we end up with this three term solution that we've just seen, cosine omega T times cosine omega T minus theta for one phase, plus cosine omega T minus 120 times cosine omega T minus 120 minus theta for the second phase, and cosine omega t minus 240, cosine omega t minus 240 minus theta for the third phase. Another trigonometric identity would be cosine alpha cosine beta equals one half of cosine alpha minus beta plus cosine alpha, alpha plus beta. So we can make that particular substitution for the product of two cosines, and P of T then reduces to I sub M I M over two as a common factor. And the terms of each of that factors would be three cosine theta plus cosine two omega T minus theta, plus cosine two omega T minus 240 minus theta, plus cosine two omega T minus 480 minus theta. You might wanna make that reduction yourself just to prove the substitution of the trigonometric identity for cosine alpha cosine beta does produce that reduced equation for p of t. In addition, let's say, for example, as a substitution, if cosine phi, the angle phi, is omega t minus theta, we essentially can write various equalities from trigonometric identities. Cosine phi minus 240 is exactly the same as cosine phi plus 120. And cosine phi minus 480, notice that 480 is greater than 360, is cosine phi minus 120. You should draw some phasor diagrams to prove this to yourself from a trigonometric point of view. Section two, three phase connections. Here we have an example of a three phase connection We'll take a balanced three-phase power source in the sense that the neutral return current will be zero. That's what we mean by balanced. We have three phases, VAN, VBN, and VCN for voltages, and we can draw them vectorially as shown here. If VAN, VBN, and VCN are all equal, the summation of those three vectorial uh, quantities, phasor quantities then, would be zero and we would call that a balanced three-phase power source as a result. And we can consider the relative phases of A, B, and C as A being the leading phase followed by B, followed by C, as shown in this time display of the three different phases. We can have a variety of connections of loads, however. We can have, for example, uh, as shown here, uh, on the left, three loads, ZY, ZY, and ZY, all connected to A, B, and C individually with a neutral return. That's not how it's normally drawn, however. The same schematic can be rendered, rendered as what's called a Y-connected load. It looks a little bit more like a Y if you just rearrange the graphic. It's exactly the same circuit, if you'll notice, but the graphic has been rearranged to emphasize that the loads are connected in a sort of Y-type connection. So line A goes to one, line B, line C, that all seems to be the same. And notice that the neutral return N is just connected at the common point, sort of the center of the Y. On the other hand, we can have so-called delta connections. So for example, we have Z delta, Z delta, Z delta connected across the three phases. And again, in the first schematic representation, it's somewhat hard to consider that it is a delta. But if we redraw the schematic so that it's exactly the same thing, 
notice that we can now see the delta connection. Notice also that in the delta connection there is no neutral return. A, B, and C basically are the phases of voltage excitation, but there is no common or neutral return because there's no common point to tie to like, it has, like we have in a Y-connected load. This is at the end of chapter 11, polyphase circuits, sections one and two.